Well, I expect more of the same. And, and one of the other good points about Target is that they, they've tried to take control of their supply chain. And I think that that's one of the bigger risks that uh, re retailers are going to face. And when you look at a company like Target, very forward thinking, early with the Omni channel, very proactive management, I expect that they're going to try real hard to minimize the disruptions in the supply channel. If I saw one blip of negativity in those strong Home Depot numbers, it was the number of trips decline. Sure, average basket size was up, and we know revenue and earnings and, and average ticket was up, but the number of trips was down. And when you have higher oil prices, that does eventually hit uh, consumers. There are some other warning signs out there, but that's what struck me as something that was pretty much overlooked in those Home Depot numbers. Have parallel days. Yesterday was Walmart and Home Depot. Today it's Target and actually Lowe's. I should have mentioned that earlier. Do you see Lowe's seeing that same kind of performance that we saw from Home Depot? Yeah, Lowe's and Home Depot are both benefiting from what we see as a, a huge uh, home renovation boom. And, and it's not really going to stop. People bought houses. And when you buy a house, it takes months and sometimes even longer for it to be upgraded or if you have a second home. So this isn't a one and done. This isn't a monthly change thing. These projects take for, for quite some time. It's really hard to hire contractors and they're going out when I'm, we're actually looking for some work and they're telling us to wait months. It's not weeks and some deliveries could be even into a year. So I don't think this is a short term cycle. I think retailers are going to be strong. The consumer is strong. Household debt levels at, at a near all time low. Household net worth at an all time high. Wage gains four or five percent. Haven't seen that in decades. Several years of wage right. gains now. So the consumer is strong. They're spending money. Americans spend money. I think that's the bright spot in the economy and an optimistic Definitely. Point for, for investors. Mark, I hate to cut you off. Before we let you go, I want to hit on something. Cycles. You mentioned cycles just then. You also, um, in your research, are hitting on some other cycles. You say we're having three years of double-digit gains for the market. Uh, you say double-digit gains for a fourth year would hit some historical precedents, including the period between 96 and 99, right before the dot-com bubble burst. Are you saying that this might be an indicator that we're in for another bubble bursting, or is it just unlikely, the fundamentals are unlikely for a fourth year of double-digit gains? Well, the, the prior time was 1949 to 53, and that was followed by a good market. So I don't want to be Dr. Doom and Gloom, but I think investors need to realize that this is not going to continue. Wall Street's not a one-way street. There's been a bit of euphoria, a set of perfect uh, events. The Fed has been incredibly accommodating. And to think we're going to get a fourth year of double-digit gains really defies history, other than the post-World War II trend. And the most recent time, it did end very badly. So I think new money should be careful. And people shouldn't just jump in because it's a great party right now. It's really late. I think it's getting close to closing time, and people need to be prudent. 